viewers and welcome to this edition of Global Vibes, a show that celebrates the multicultural community of Thunder Bay. In today's show, please join me in welcoming Reverend Desire, the new minister from St. Paul's United Church. Welcome, um, Reverend Desire. Thank so you. very happy to have you. Thank you very much. In fact, post-COVID, an in-person taping, you are my first guest. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so, happy to be your first guest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, do I understand that um, you are one of the very few black ministers that we are very proud and delighted to have in Thunder Bay? Yes, Reverend Desire? Um, that's very true. Yeah. There are few uh, black ministers. Actually, I know one from Zambia and another white guy from South Africa. Okay. So, I could be one of the few. <laughs> <laughs> Rightly so. Yeah. so um, we would love to know uh, definitely more about you. So, um, Reverend Desire, please tell us a little bit about, um, about yourself. Okay. Uh, Your my name, my name is Desire Tiruepi. I was born in Harare, the capital city of Zimbabwe. Uh, I did my primary, secondary, and university education in Zimbabwe. And I, I trained uh, as a minister. I did a certificate in, in theology. I did um, a Bachelor of Arts Honours at the University of Zimbabwe. I did my Master's at the University of Zimbabwe and wow. qualified as a minister in Zimbabwe. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations with all those yes. academic pursuits. Thank you. Um, what my research said, Zimbabwe, of course, is a landlocked um, country in the Southern Africa. Um, known for its dramatic landscapes and wildlife. Yes. Yeah, safaris and yeah, things we, like that. Yeah, we, we have uh, agriculture is uh, the main um, support to the Zimbabwean economy. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of farming that happens. Mm -hmm. But Zimbabwe is one of the three countries that managed to keep uh, a strong presence of wildlife. Right. So if you want to see... Uh, wildlife, you go to Zimbabwe. Diverse yes, wildlife. Yes. And uh, Zimbabwe also had the Victoria Falls. Yes. The largest waterfall mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, and Lake Kariba, the largest man made lake in yeah. terms of volume. Yeah. What a vibrant country you come from. Yes. <laughs> so um, we all have unique immigration journey to Canada. Uh, some, you know, some of us have come for academics, some for career paths. Um, what brought you all the way to Thunder Bay? Yeah. From Zimbabwe, my story goes after high school. Mm -hmm. um, I worked as a minister mm -hmm. and also as a teacher. I was a teacher minister mm -hmm. working as a chaplain in schools and uh, doing both teaching and ministering. But there was a time when things fell apart in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. uh, economically. Uh, year 2007 was the worst when practically everything broke down. I left not only myself with thousands of other Zimbabweans. I left and I went to the Congo as a teacher, as an English teacher. Okay. So I went there, I quickly found a job and I started teaching in the DRC. Mm -hmm. You know, DRC is a French country. Mm -hmm. There are few English schools. So I managed to fit in the, the, that setting. And then it was during that that I managed to um, find my church mm -hmm. in Congo and I started, I joined ministry. And I was there leading the English congregation in the DRC for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. So after leading the English congregation for 15 years, I felt bent out. Mm -hmm. They could not itinerate me from one church to another because of the language barrier. I was not that good in French, though I could speak a bit of their languages, yeah, okay. but not to lead a church. So I was stuck in one congregation for 15 years. That's how I started looking around where I can leave Congo. Mm -hmm. I discovered the United Church of Canada okay. and I started the process uh, to joined the church as an admission minister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went through several interviews mm -hmm. and I, I managed to make it. And then the other hurdle was immigration. It was not easy. It took years, almost like three years 
for me to be able to be in Canada now. Yeah. So basically, I can say the journey from Congo, it was not an easy one. Yeah. It was to go through the setting of the church, mm -hmm. qualify to be a minister, and then transfer your credentials from your mother church to the United Church of Canada. Oh, and then see. after that, you, I started now the immigration process. Okay. I had to send my certificates to the immigration, send my, my letters of recommendation and reference letters mm -hmm. to the immigration until when the immigration of Canada was satisfied that mm -hmm. I'm qualified, that's when they gave me the, the opportunity to come. And remember, mm -hmm. I was not coming alone. I'm married and I have three children. So it was a family of five. Family of five. Yeah. I have so many questions to ask you. If I had to pronounce your name in French, how yeah. would, what would that be? Okay. My name is Desiree, Desiree. in French. Yeah. Of course, in English, they call me Desire. Desire. But <laughs> when I was in Congo, nobody called me Desire. They oh. called me Desiree. But the first language was English. Though. Yes. Yeah, it was yeah. the first language was yeah. English. Yeah. Um, I also want to know um, about your interest in theology. When did that start? How did that start? But I think uh, we will be taking a very short break. Okay. Uh, very briefly, dear viewers, uh, we'll be right back. Uh, stay tuned. And uh, we'll be back talking to Reverend Desire uh, to learn about his interest in theology and how that evolved or emerged um, as a minister in professionally. <music> Welcome back, viewers. You're watching Global Wives. And today my guest is Reverend Desire, the new minister of uh, St. Paul's, Saint Paul's United, United Church. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about your interest. Um, how did that calling come? Yeah. Um, how did that, um, the interest that came to study theology? Yeah. The interest to study theology is kind of a vocation. Mm -hmm. um, you need to have a calling. Yeah. To, for you to pursue theological, religious studies or theological studies. So after high school, I did well. Mm -hmm. And my parents wanted me to be a pilot. I actually joined the army. I went for the entrance test of joining <laughs> the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I passed. Mm -hmm. But then events un unfolded in another way around. Like my minister, who was pastor to me, mm -hmm. Then I quickly identified me and said, no, you will not do good in the army because you have gifts to lead the people. Oh. So uh, you may do it. So he told me, you may do it, but you won't be happy because you are already doing good as a youth leader. I was a youth leader oh. then. So that's when I then put my focus on theological education. Yeah. I served the church for one year after high school, and then I went to school. And... I pursued uh, theological education until now I'm doing my, my doctorate. Interesting. Yes. So, oh, you're pursuing a PhD? Yes, a I'm PhD? pursuing my, my, my PhD. Wow. Yeah. So what drives theological education is a calling. You cannot study theology unless if you are called to be a minister, if you are called in a religious nice. leadership uh, work. Yeah, that's when you can pursue mm -hmm. a theology. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you uh, yeah. for sharing um, the journey, yeah. your academic pursuits. And relocation um, comes with its own sets of challenges yeah. as well as um, it's an adventure. Yeah? Yeah. Finding, coming to a new place, settling down. How has it been so far in Bay, um, Canada? I can say so far so good. Everything is smooth. Yeah. I have not faced any header, any major mm -hmm. challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I have a very good support base at St. Paul's. Uh, they really love me yeah. and they really appreciate me. Being a black minister, mm -hmm. the first black minister to save a big church in, in Thunder Bay, I, I have not found any challenge. I do my work pretty well without any discrimination, no limitation. Actually, the United Church of Canada will not allow you to come here if mm -hmm. you are not qualified. So... Mm -hmm. uh, about qualification, there are no questions. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, racial discrimination, I really want to be very Stress. thankful. Yeah, mm -hmm. there is no 
day, one day where I felt my rights were impeded or because of my color or in the shop or anywhere I'm walking around, I have not experienced that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's wonderful. So I find people giving me equal treatment. They, they treat me quite fairly, not only myself, but my wife Your and, and my family. And the children as well. Yeah, they join the, the local schools. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. The children are all in schools. Mm -hmm. So the eldest, uh, oldest bright blessing is at St. Ignatius. He's doing his last class at St. Ignatius. Brian is at, at Bishop EQ, mm -hmm. and Beverly, the youngest, she is at Corpus Christi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've not heard them complain about mm -hmm. any racial discrimination. Actually, my wife, after one and a half months, she managed to, f to secure a job, like in accounting, not any other job, mm -hmm. but she secured a job of what she trained for, of which I was really surprised. Fantastic. Like coming here, I thought, my wife is going to do anything. I mean, like low, low jobs. Mm. People told us it would be difficult for you mm. to find what you trained for. But I want to thank God. She applied for an accounting position. She found the job. Yeah. So basically, we are settling very well. It's yeah. your hard work as well, your perseverance, yes. and your open nature to adapt to a new place. That, that really uh, plays... As well. A, a very big role. Absolutely. You need to be open. You need to be uh, somebody who is approachable and learn to approach people, mm. speak to people for you to be able to settle down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your work at the church. What's, your, what's a, a normal day uh, is like besides the Sunday, of course. Yeah. But Okay. Uh, basically, I am off on Monday. Mm -hmm. I do not work. But my work involves... Um, working with committees, the administration. There are several committees that make up the leadership of St. Paul's. I, as a minister, I have to meet with them. I have to work with them, I mean, giving spiritual guidance in the work that they are doing. Uh, I also have to visit, I mean, doing what we call pastoral care, visiting hospitals, oh, okay. members who are sick, and, and praying with them and encouraging them. I also have to visit people in their houses if there is need. You know, people have various mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. Some stress, some are sick, cancer, some are bereaved families. Mm -hmm. So I, the minister's job is to be with them and to encourage them, okay. to share the word of God. I also have to lead funeral services. If somebody dies, we do a funeral send-off in the church and mm -hmm. the minister will lead that. Mm -hmm. And apart from, of course, I preach many times. I have to stand on the podium <laughs> and preach the word of God. <laughs> How do you choose a topic uh, to preach on a daily, day to day basis? Yeah. What, what, what is that um, that inspires you that today I will talk about so and so topic? Yeah. How does so, that happen? Uh, there, are, there are quite a number of factors okay. that lead to the choice of a topic. Mm -hmm. We have what we call a lectionary, which United Church lectionary, which practically gives the Bible verses and the readings from the scripture mm -hmm. that are supposed to be read on each day or each Sunday. But apart from that, the minister has the liberty to change that according to the context. So how I live my life the whole week and the problems that I face as I visit people, what they tell me as their challenges may drive me to a theme. Mm. Yeah, that I will choose for that particular week. And, right. and then a theme that will help uh, to reach out to the needs of the people and uplift them and give them hope. Uh, so there are so many factors that mm -hmm. actually <laughs> <laughs> lead to the choice of a, a choice topic, of topic of one week. It's not only the lectionary, but situations in life. And as a minister, I'm a servant of God. I also listen quietly mm -hmm. to the voice of God that speaks to me, yeah. You said reaching out to the members of your uh, congregation. Yeah. Um, who do you want to reach out? I'm a person from a different faith. Yeah. I don't go to church. Okay. So how can I come and listen to Reverend Desire's preaching? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm reaching out to all the Thunder Bay inhabitants, mm -hmm. uh, people of color, 
uh, the uh, first community in, in Thunder Bay. In other words, I'm reaching out to everyone. It's a universal call. If you want to listen to Reverend Desire, you come to 349 Waverly <laughs> Street. Okay. That's where the, it's a huge congregation. It's the biggest church in that area. Oh, is that so? Yes. So you, everyone is actually welcome. And near the door, we put a very big banner that shows that everyone, regardless of many other things that separate people in society, the St. Paul's is open and welcome. Oh, fantastic. And I hope to see you <laughs> one day in the church. And of course, that I would love be, to listen to you. That would be marvelous. That would be marvelous. Yeah. Um, so how can a local church celebrate diversity? You did say that, you know, the church doors are open for everybody. Yes. Are there any special programs um, that, uh, you know, is open to everybody in the community? Yes. Um, actually, the, before I came, the church deliberately um, decided to be welcoming. That means in that church, there is no kind of discrimination. Mm -hmm. Okay. People who are of color, of people of African origin or the First Nations or people from any other walk of life, they are welcome at St. Paul's. Yeah. So this was a decision that was made many years before I came. But when I came, this is the kind of approach that I have. Mm -hmm. So that's why they found me when they were looking for me in the hub. Mm -hmm. They saw that this minister is also welcoming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Uh, basically, this is so now we are putting our effort together. The church trying to welcome the doors and open their doors. And myself, my message is everyone is mm -hmm. welcome. So we have a uh, few black people trickling in. Mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have people coming. I mean, all genders, men, women, children. So what we are doing is we try to do an all age service. Mm -hmm where we include everyone. So the children will have their own time in our service. The women are active. The men are active. People of middle ages are active. And the seniors are active. And having a black minister also shows that we, they are not discriminating color. Mm. So the, the people of color are welcome. To that service, yes. You speak of genuine commitment and collective commitment, of not course. only from yourself but also from the church yeah, yeah, yeah. It's members. A, it's a collective, yeah, um, and, um, kind of commitment. And I see that you're a motivational relationship builder. How fantastic yes. is that? Yeah. Yes, yes. We need so many more people like you in our community. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I, I'm sure you're going to have a very, very nice time here. Um, the I summers are so. beautiful. I hope so. And you can see all the four <laughs> seasons. Yes, <laughs> of course. We came at a time when uh, the weather went down to minus 38. I mean, a day after we <laughs> arrived. So we, we were advised never to go outside the house, <laughs> to just stay inside. Right. But uh, I find now the weather is now friendly. Everything has changed yes. for yeah. the good. The yeah. sun is coming out. Yeah. The sun is shining and green, grass green is coming up. Yeah, there's positivism <laughs> yes. everywhere. Yes. Yeah? yes. So Reverend Desire, it's absolutely an honor for me to speak to you. Thank you. And I um, wholeheartedly and warmly welcome you to yes. Thunder Bay on behalf of a community. Thank you very much. Like I said, you're going to have a great time. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure we're going to meet some place, some activity. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in, Definitely. In, in, over here in the yeah. community. So thank yeah. you so much for Thank you time. very much. Thank you. Um, Dear viewers, stay tuned because we are going to be speaking to another member of, mm -hmm. uh, from St. Paul's United uh, Church. Uh, he's a very active member and yeah. I believe a long-term resident. So we'll get to know a little bit more about the church and its activities. Stay yeah. tuned. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching Global Vibes. We have a new guest, um, Ray Queen, a long-term resident of Thunder Bay and member of the St. Paul's United Church. Welcome and very, very happy to have you here, Ray. Thank you. Uh, I said long-term resident. How long? 
How long is how, <laughs> how long is long? Well, we we're not uh, native to Thunder Bay. We've been here for about forty five years, so wow. a long time. Wow. A lot of that time has been at St. Paul's United Church right. as well. So you have been very actively involved with the church activities? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Reverend um, Desai was speaking to us about his approach with uh, celebrating diversity, you know, equity and inclusiveness, how he's, you know, the church is inclusive and uh, inviting every member of the community to come to share some activities um, you know, from your experience, uh, especially with the youth. We'd love to hear what, what kind of programs or activities are there for the youth. Well, I'm not too active in that particular part of it, but um, there is a youth group, mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's uh, not, not all that large. Um, we're kind of hoping that uh, Pastor Desire is going to increase that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the church, con you meet every Sunday, and you were mentioning that the women are very, very active. So how, how are they involved? Well, they're, they're involved with the, um, the worship service themselves. We have, we have several, would they be lay ministers? Yeah. Yeah. We have several lay ministers in the church who right. uh, have done a lot of services uh, up until when Pastor Desire came. Because mm -hmm. we went a couple of years, we didn't have an act, we didn't have an active minister. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're quite involved with that. Um, and greeting and uh, of course coffee hour afterwards is always coffee hour downstairs. So um, and and in committee work, uh, women are very strong in the committee work. Oh, <laughs> okay. a lot of commitment, time commitment as well. Yeah, yeah quite a bit of time commitment. You have seen the church evolve, emerge over the years. And you must have met a lot of ministers as well. Yeah, we've had a lot of ministers, and the church certainly has um, progressed over the years. Um, I guess as all churches have, they've, um, they're have they dwindling, mm -hmm. as most people know, that the, the membership is dropping. St. Paul's United Church is is a, I guess, what we call is an older church. There's a lot of elderly people there, uh, which is pretty much what a lot of the churches in Thunder Bay are going through. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a dynamic, very dynamic um, Reverend Desire here now. Yes, and uh, we'll see the, the numbers going up for sure and more youth and, uh, you know, general participation as well, I'm sure. He right? is a very dynamic minister. <laughs> I, yeah, I am so. And a bit sneaky too. <laughs> Wants to know a lot about the debate culture. Getting me to come out here like this. <laughs> I really wish you all the very, very best. Um, you know, bringing out all kinds of um, you know activities and planning um, uh, different kind of things to do for all of us. And I wish you all the very best. And if you have any last message for our uh, viewers, uh, and in terms of where to connect with you, uh, if there's an email address or uh, a place to visit you. This would be a time. Yeah. Um, the last message that I would want to give to the viewers is we have life at St. Paul's. Mm. Yeah, we would want people from all walks of life without any discrimination, mm. uh, color, uh, sexuality, and various other things that impede us in society. St. Paul's is overcome that. So we welcome them. We have a good program for the children, which includes the children in our worship service. Nice. So children are welcome. Uh, uh, the youth are welcome. Youth activities are happening in the church, and also the women are welcome. I think there is a main fellowship that will come later on the line. I'm sure. So we want the church is balanced. Right. Yeah, and. St. Paul's is at 345 Waverly Street. It's the big building that is uh, found there. So anybody who wants to come and worship with us, they are welcome. Thank you so much, yeah. Reverend Desire and Ray. All the very best. Thank you, viewers, for joining us on this edition of Global Wives. Till we meet again, stay well, stay safe, and stay healthy.